Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and look at these rose stems behind me all bare and thorny and ugly. Nothing beautiful about that, but actually I think it's beautiful. I think it's a great opportunity to come to your roses during the dormant season like this and give them a spray with something that will disinfect them and protect them and get them ready for the coming season. You see, this is something that we have as an advantage in temperate climates that they don't have in those tropical or subtropical places where the, of course they have blooms all year round, but we get a break in the season when the pest levels are lowest and it gives us a chance to disinfect and protect our plants for the coming season. Let me show you how. All right, first question I'm going to answer in this video is what is dormant spray? And by dormant spray here, I'm talking actually about three different sprays. I'm talking about dormant oil, which is the only one that has dormant in its name. I'm talking about lime sulfur, and I'm talking also about copper-based sprays. There are copper formulations you can buy ready-made in the store, or there's something called Bordeaux mix. Next question, what are they even supposed to do? Well, the formulations of these oil, lime sulfur, and copper sprays are made to be thick and sticky and actually harsher than you would apply during the active season. So what they're actually supposed to do is get into the fissures and the buds of these plants and kill off those overwintering stages of those insects and spores so that you don't have to deal with them all season. In general, you'd say that the horticultural oil is used for the insects, that the lime sulfur is targeted towards the fungus and that the copper spray is targeted towards the uh, bacteria although there is some overlap in their modes of action. Very common question here is can I mix all three of them together or can I throw some insecticidal soap in there to buff up the activity? And the answer to this is typically no. Uh, I know how people become kind of mad scientists when it comes to their spraying, uh, but usually it's a limit of two of the three together at a time. So you could have the dormant oil with the lime sulfur, that works just fine. Some approved copper sprays will allow you to combine it with the dormant oil but you shouldn't have all three in the same spray. There's a limit to how much you can fit into that water for dispersal and for proper mixing. And it could be that those chemicals will interact with each other in a way you don't want to. So that's, a, that's the limit there. And I did look up the use of insecticidal soap with these and the answer is no. It specifically says, do not mix this with lime sulfur or with copper products, so don't do that. Next question, can I apply these in the season of active growth? Say if I see fungal problems or insects starting to develop on the leaves and foliage of my new plants, can I apply it then? And the answer to that is generally no. These formulations are put together to be a little bit harsher, a little bit more chemically active than what you would apply during the active season. So they can damage the foliage. The dormant oil uh, can be replaced with horticultural oil during the main season. And you can also use the lime sulfur on its own. Uh, however, it can interact with other chemicals that you're using during the active season. Uh, Bordeaux mix typically is late winter or early spring only. In all three of these cases, uh, you can replace them with better sprays during the active season. And keep in mind that these are really intended as preventives. There's something to disinfect and clean up the roses or other fruit trees and not intended to be applied uh, during the active season to try to cure a problem after it's already started. Next question up is, are they safe? And the answer to that is a qualified yes. The qualification is used as directed. These have a long track record of safe use in the garden. They're even considered for eligibility for organic production methods. Now, that all being said, they tend to be a little bit harsher and stickier and stinkier and uh, heavily colored compared to other kinds of sprays or product applications. Uh, so you'll want to take the precautions of covering yourself. That is, generally you're going to apply it with gloves, mask, eye protection, and you're not going to wear clothes that you mind getting stained either orange with the lime sulfur or sort of blue with the Bordeaux mix. And, uh, and you'll want to take the general precautions that they use about keeping it away from ponds and waterways as well, because I think the lime sulfur can be toxic to marine life.
Now, yes, in this video, I've been talking a little bit about copper spray and Bordeaux mix as if they're two separate things, and they kind of are. They're both copper-based products, but the copper sprays that you'll usually find in the store as sort of a ready-to-mix bottle is chemically produced, and it isn't the same thing as the traditional Bordeaux mix. Now, I've made a video on how to prepare Bordeaux mix. I'll stick that up in the corner of the video here, but that's the traditional copper spray that you would use, and again, is definitely a winter spray. The mixes that they offer for pre-mixed in the store may be eligible for summer application as well and they're kind of an easier to use version of Bordeaux but I find that the Bordeaux is stickier that is very effective as a dormant application. Well, is this something you have to do to get good quality roses or fruit trees? And the answer to that is a resounding no. I would never recommend to you spraying chemicals just because we told you so. It really should be guided by the conditions in your garden. Do you have heavy disease pressure? Have you struggled with black spot or powdery mildew or leaf spot or something that has ruined the flowers or fruit of your trees in previous seasons? Then I would consider it. But if you all you've ever dealt with is just light disease pressure that you've picked off and still gotten good fruiting or flowering, then I would say skip this step. It's probably not worth your time, your effort, or the application of chemicals. Final question here, because it's getting rainy outside, is is there anything else you should do to your roses or fruit trees at the same time uh, for sanitation or overwintering that would help them to come into the season a little bit cleaner? The answer to that is yes. Uh, a lot of my roses in this climate will hold their leaves going into the winter a little bit, drop some. So what I would do is I would pluck off the remainder of those leaves or do a light pruning off of some of the uh, spent buds or spent uh, rose hips to just get them off of the plant. Basically just a general clean up before this spray so that all those sprays can hit the nooks and crannies of the plant. Uh, on the same topic, all those leaves that have dropped to the bottom of the plant are sort of a spread along the base of the plant and are basically waiting there to push their spores or overwintering insects back up to the plant as it comes out of dormancy. So if you can remove some of those spent leaves, maybe even replace the mulch around the base of the plant, this is a good time to do it as well. Remember your whole goal is to try to get your plant as clean as possible coming into the season so you don't struggle quite so much with those overwintering spores or insects going into the new season. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this, please drop those into the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.